but um, it was nice. It was the Nutcracker Ballet. Okay, we'll get a Sicilian here. We have a Hyper Accelerated Dragon. So the best way to play against the Hyper Accelerated Dragon is you play this Maroxy Bind. And it's, it's important to play C4 here before you start, before you play D4. Because if you play D4, and if they play Knight F6 instead of Bishop G7, then you don't have a good way of defending this pawn. So you have to play Knight C3, and then you can't play your C pawn up. But now we can play D4. And if white takes, or if black takes, you can take. When black attacks this knight again, you defend with bishop e3. When black attacks the pawn here, you defend with knight c3. Castles. So the main move, I think, is not castles, it's d6. In which case, you should play bishop e2, because it, when d6 is played, then knight g5 becomes a threat. So you should play bishop e2. Or maybe you should play f3. Because if you play bishop e2, I think sometimes black plays knight g5 anyway. And then takes, 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 and bishop takes d5. I think that's actually the main line. But people don't really go for that very often. But okay, our plan is still the same. We're going to be castling kingside. So black plays d6 anyway. And here, right, the queen is kind of a little overworked, right? The knight still could possibly come to g5. I think. So we should start with f3 before we castle so that... A piece can't come. Oh, I keep saying g5. I mean g4. So we'll start with f3. And this is still theory. And this is called this setup from white is called the Maroxy bind. And it's considered to be very good for white. Okay. You should if this capture ever happens, you should take with the bishop, not the queen, right? My what I would what I would recommend if you don't like learning theory is learn sidelines. Particularly end games. So any lines where there's an early queen trade. Any lines where there's an early queen trade. You could because if you can learn those lines and get a lot of experience with those lines then I think in practice, you will have an advantage over your opponent. Okay, we're going to play b3. Try to discourage a4, which is, okay, maybe b3 was not a super great plan, but we're also supporting c4 here. And we'll play queen d2 and rooks to the d and e files next. Queen d2. Well, I think I'm happy to see that move. Because I think I should certainly take this bishop. Shouldn't I? It just makes a lot of sense. And now, I bring my rook to the d-file. Put a lot of pressure on this d-pawn, is what I want. This is not a concern to me this bishop shut down and if black ever tries to use the f pawn to open things up then the king safety starts to be compromised so i think i'm happy with my position at this point we'll play reggae d1 great to see you here there's one thing that i want to do this year that i haven't done yet or that i i have wanted to do in the past week that I haven't I just haven't been able to do it which is I want to listen to the liquidity 2021 year mix year mix remix I don't think there is too much to think about here 
We'll simply play king h1. My knight wants to get to this d5 square now, which is a fantastic central square. And the problem is, black can't really kick it out with e6. Maybe they can, though. Maybe they can, because then maybe they can follow it up with... Well, no, I think it's very hard for black to follow it up with d5 in many of those lines. Right, and if white ever captures with the bishop, then we take with the e pawn, and we now we then target this this e pawn here, and I think that's good. Now I'm turning it back up. We'll play knight d five. Hopefully, I'm not blundering here. I don't think I'm blundering. Okay, so we should certainly take with the e pawn here, because now. Black's e pawn becomes certainly tender, right? If this is a weakness, this is a huge weakness in Black's position. And if Black ever tries to get rid of it, then the king's safety starts to become bad. So I think we certainly have some advantage here, which makes sense because this opening that my opponent has gone for, I don't think it's considered super great for Black. Um, it's considered really solid. Well, no, it's considered. It's like a, it's like a quick set. Uh, it's like a quick setup, right? It's a system that black can play. Um, but if white plays correctly, then white can certainly punish it, and I think we have succeeded in that. I think we certainly have a good position here, and we definitely have some advantage. This rook is coming to the e file. Or maybe actually, maybe this rook is coming to the E file. And then we play on the E and the F files. F4, F5. Yes. I'd like to listen to it, but there are, um, I, I'm not allowed to. Not here, unfortunately. But you guys could listen to it. Just search Liquicity Year Mix 2021. It's um, it's a drums and bass remix of all of the hottest, all of the uh, the best songs of 2021. And I listen to uh, to Liquicity a lot. I listen to their music a lot. So, so I'm thinking Queen D3. I don't think we're actually threatening to take this because of the skewer, right? So we would have to defend our bishop first. But I definitely don't want to trade queens here because it's harder for me to attack. My bishop is really bad, right? I need my queen to attack. And it gives him this target on a2, which will be very hard for me to defend. It'll be tender for me to defend. So I think I'm going to play queen d3. And what am I What am I expecting from my opponent? I don't know what I'm expecting my opponent to play. Hmm. Maybe I should have actually checked on d5. Dang it. I, I'm actually... I think I'm slightly regretting not checking on d5 here. Let's get the F pawn going. Because now he might be able to get rid of this, his weakness here. And I'm not happy about that. Okay. He's going for counterplay on the queen side. He's actually threatening to take this. If I play F5, he takes. I take. What if I play rook f3, though? If I play rook f3. Takes, takes, and rook a3. Rook b1. Okay, start with rook f3. Did I get top 500? I did not. Not even close. Not even close. I don't. I didn't even look at what I ended up getting. I think I got like eleven hundred or something, but I didn't even check because I literally don't care. Chat. 
I literally don't care. <laughs> um. Yo, MRM, what's up, dude? Great to see you here. Welcome back. Yeah, I... I'm a little disappointed we didn't get top 500, but it's okay. I think we should defend this. Yeah, play rook b1. If he plays here, I can always recapture with my bishop. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. Or I could even just capture straight away. We've definitely got some counterplay on the king side here. Right, he has to be careful that his pieces don't get left out of play. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm kind of memeing. Kind of memeing. Um but it was like I really wanted to make top 500 and so if I I, I didn't make top 500 and so since I didn't make top 500, I don't um I don't really care where I placed instead uh we'll check right now though let's check just for curiosity where did i place uh, my guess is like 1100 something like that 1093 yeah because i checked i checked when there was like an hour left in the tournament and i was like around a thousand so i'm like if I was around a thousand when I when there was an hour left, I'm probably around eleven hundred. I like my position so far. Black has made some pressure here, but we've got everything defended, and now we're gonna start making threats of our own on the king side. And it's gonna be pog. It's gonna be wide people happy. I wouldn't be surprised here if my opponent plays f5. I would not be surprised. I don't know what top 500 was, but I would assume it's at least like 270, like 260 or 270 is what I would guess. So we were definitely a ways away. We played for nine hours, which is not really a lot. Not really a lot. Nine out of 24 hours. Okay, what's the idea, buddy? What's the idea? Because I think... I think my move is very clear. I play f5 and I threaten to play f6 and I'm just trying to break down the king side. I'm opening up this diagonal so there's some rook h3 possibilities. I don't think there's too much to think about. This guy is defended. The back rank is defended. Is he going to play queen d2? That's the that is what he might play actually. That's what his plan is. That would force the queens. Uh, force the queens off the board. That's what I mean. Check. Hmm. I don't think that check does much. Is there any way I can avoid this queen trade? I would have to play this move, but then that allows rook b two. So I think the best I have is f five. Queen d4 check and then rook b2. I didn't actually see that off his shredder. But no move suggestions. No move suggestions. Queen d2 check and then rook b2. Queen e1 check. Bishop f1. Rook a1. h3. I think that's okay. How did I do for USCF in 2021? In terms of what I was hoping, not a specific number. So my USCF rating is now 1599. My goal in the goal that I had set for my USCF rating at the end of 2021 was I wanted my USCF rating to be 1600 or higher. And it is 1599. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> so we have check the king moves. Check. And then I guess we're playing bishop f1 next. I guess that's what we have to play. Whoa. Um, okay, so we don't have checkmate because of the x-ray. I guess that move makes sense. We'll take. And we have to take the queen. 
And now, where do I put my bishop? This is the only square, right? Bishop f1 is the only move. Because if I go here, then I get mated. Maybe we'll try to get the open file here. We, I think we're worse. I think we're slightly worse. Watch my YouTube game analysis. Was a solid watch. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. We're definitely worse because this bishop is just so bad. Right? It's, it's a very bad piece. There is some idea of attacking this knight. And when the knight moves, we play rook f6. Well, I guess the knight can come here. The point is, I want to win this pawn. But this knight coming here is it's annoying. I'm dreading my opponent's next move because there's a lot of different plans that I can play here. I think I know what I would play. I'm not going to say it just in case my opponent's watching. Um, I'll say it after they make a move. There's rook a2, grabbing the open file. There's f5. There's king e8. I think I would have played f5 if I were black. I think rook a1 is a pretty clear move here. Is it? Maybe king g1, improving the king. Because I want to play rook f2, too. So I'll play king g1 because I want to play rook f2. JVN right says you agree on f5? Yeah. Gaining space, preventing rook f6. You're maintaining your control over the light squares, which my bishop, you know, you want to have good control over the light squares here. So do I play rook f2 here? Because then maybe I can start to activate my bishop. Maybe. I can trade one pair of rooks. If I trade both pair of rooks, it will be losing. But I can afford to trade one pair of rooks, which is what I'm doing now because this rook is really active. This rook is less active. And so if I can trade while activating my king, I might have some plans to reactivate this bishop here. It might be a long journey, but um, we might... It, it, you you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. Right? I feel like black doesn't know how to move on. So black declines the rook trade. Okay. I respect that. But I think he should have probably traded. I'm assuming rook d3 will be played next. King f2 may be my next move. Well, no, actually. If he plays rook d3, I'll start with rook a2. How do I compute that trading both rooks is losing? It's very simple. Because if I trade both rooks, all these pawns are in light squares. It's impossible, actually, for me to get them off light squares. So it becomes very, very hard for me to use the bishop. The knight is completely dominant over the bishop in this endgame because white has these pawns on light squares on the queen side. So white will be able to activate their minor piece better. And that is really all it takes for black to win that end game. It's a more active minor piece, right? I'm having a very hard time defending this spot. Okay, I have to go for this. There, there, here. There's check. King F2 takes, 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 and takes. It's even material, I think. <laughs> I think that's working. Rook a7 wouldn't have worked. I think on rook a7, he just defends. And I haven't really, haven't really done anything. That was my evaluation anyway. Yeah. And even with the rooks on, talking about this minor piece, it's still worse for white. Because the pawns are on light squares, so it's much harder to play for white. Um... But at least white has chances with the rooks on, right? Because only one out of three of the pieces are bad instead of one out of one of the pieces being bad, <laughs> right? It's probably lost already, you think? Maybe. Maybe you're right. But I don't like to think like that. This is what we calculated, right? Knight e4, rook a5. Knight d2, rook d1, knight f3 check, king f2. Rook takes d1, king takes d3. Rook takes f1, pawn takes f3. Even material. This pawn is okay because it's pinned. Right? I want to play c5. I'm trying to get my pawns off of the light squares. 
It does leave this d5 pawn a little weak, though. Maybe we can have some exchange. My rook gets checks against the king. That might happen. He obviously sees this. He's calculating it right now. Is that a free knight? Free knight, Pog. So I have rook f2. Yeah, now my opponent is just tilted, I think. They're, I think they're tilted that they hung their knight. Okay. We'll play rook b5, and we want to get these pawns here. The bishop defends the rook, so we're not hanging a rook. Um, That's a good move. It can still be a draw, yeah. It can still be a draw. Check. Everything is still defended. Check there. He was threatening rook takes f1 there. Yeah, this still takes some work. And with 3 minutes 50, it's not easy. Right? I wish I had all the time in the world, but I don't. It'll be really frustrating to draw this, but... Um, that's why converting is important. Right? I think I'm threatening this move. Yeah, because takes... I come back. Check. Takes. Check. Takes. 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 If he takes, I'll trade rooks, and I think that's winning. It's the wrong colored bishop, too. So I have to keep my g-pawn. I have to be careful about that. All right, I've got, I've got just enough pawns here. I want to try to pick up some of these pawns. Buffalo, what's up, dude? Oh, Bavin Kola, what's up? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. E easy win for Dvoretsky's endgame school. Hopefully, hopefully I can convert this. This is winning, but it's not super easy. He has to take, right? If he doesn't take, then I get my rook here. Yeah. Is this winning? <laughs> well, if this isn't winning, h5 here. This should be good. Now, because I play this move. So if you go after this pawn, then I get the f-pawn. I should eventually be able to zoog zwang my opponent. And then it should be a win. And if you play this move, then you can never approach. Once again, and, and well, this pawn will just hang. So there was a losing blunder somewhere here. Or it was just losing the whole time. I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent was drawing this at some point, though. They have to go for this, otherwise it's very simply losing. But now, we zug him, we get this pawn, and I think, I think it's easy clap from here. Is it not? King h5, this pawn will fall. Bishop g4. Uh, 
Oops, I, I made a small, small boo-boo. But that's okay, we get it eventually. Bishop defends here. Black will be Zeus wronged eventually. Time, time, time. I need some speed. I need some speed here. Yep. Uh... Get him out of here. Woohoo! All right. Paul Macaroni. Woo! That was, uh, that was, that was a nice game. Feels good. Get him out of here. GM Kaiser. GM Kaiser. Gray Grizzle down to the wire. That's what I like to see. Ninety-three moves. Oh my goodness! What? Yeah, what a long game gap. I didn't even realize until you said something. GG. Yeah, we you, we used all of our time. That's how you use all of your time. <laughs> uh, was this ever drawing for black? It was. I blundered. H5, G takes H5 as a draw. Yeah, I thought so. I thought after H5, I thought, I think G takes H5 as a draw. Um, luckily, my opponent, my opponent didn't go for it. Because now I play H6. Um, and it's a win. Because... The problem is here, there's h4, and if if he ever gets my g-pawn, then I'm losing, or I'm not losing, but it's, it's a draw, and if he ever gets my g-pawn to the h-file, it's also a draw. So I can't let him take, I, and I can't take, so at the very least, I make some random move. Actually, like, yeah, he just plays h3 here. And then he plays h4, h5, and gets his king to the corner. And um, it's a draw here, right? It doesn't matter what I do. Um, he plays h5. And it's a draw. Because. So I realized this after I played h5. But luckily, my opponent did not take. They played g5. Whew. Why did I play h5? My idea was, or my reasoning behind h5 was because I, I did not like my opponent playing h6 and then g5 and f4 and all the pawns are in dark squares and so i can't attack them with my bishop my reasoning was if i play h5 then 
it, the pawns are weak and I should be able to, you know, pick them up with the bishop. And if you don't take, then I play h6, which is what happened in the game. This pawn is stuck on a light square. And if you go try to pick it up, then I play bishop d3 and I get the f pawn. Um, and I get my king in and it should be winning. And that's exactly what happened in the game. 